What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steve Rastatoski here of Maze and Brew, and today we're talking everything name, image, and likeness. Okay, you'll see NIL also mentioned everywhere on Twitter. It's been blowing up the past couple of days. NCAA has allowed athletes to finally profit off of their name, image, and likeness. So, what is name, image, and likeness? What are the rules that Michigan has put in place? How is it going to change college football and college athletics as a whole? And specifically, how can Michigan or how has Michigan? been using this to their advantage. So let's dive in right away. Before we can dive into how Michigan's going to use it, let's get an understanding of what it actually is. So name, image, and likeness, as of July 1st, NCAA has allowed athletes to make money off of uh, essentially their their publicity. Okay, They have the right to publicity, and uh, it pertains to someone's own right to profit off of the, their notoriety, off of their name, their popularity, um, and, and sign endorsement deals, uh, accept money from brands and businesses because of that. So you'll see them have posts on social media. You'll see commercials that will have collegiate athletics um, or collegiate athletes, I should say. They can make appearances for signing autographs, different things like that um, to actually make money. Beyond that, they can profit off YouTube channels. They uh, can sign with different uh, esports organizations and appear on Twitch live streams, whole bunch of things that they'll be able to do as well as a couple athletes have already uh, launched their own clothing brand, which uh, Adrian Nunez of Michigan's men basketball team has already done so. So you're going to keep seeing this coming along. So it's important to get an understanding of all these things that fall within name, image, and likeness. So there are a dozen states or so that have laws in effect that dictate how collegiate athletes can profit from name, image, and likeness. NCAA has instructed schools in these states to follow state guidelines that do exist. NCAA has instructed schools in states that do not have laws in effect uh, to craft their own policies, uh, the schools to craft their own policies in lieu of their states not having those guidelines. So let's do a rapid fire FAQ real quick. Does this mean the schools are allowed to pay athletes? No. Okay. Strictly an opportunity for athletes to partner with businesses. No payments should come from the university directly. We know they probably will still as they are today, but not legally, that will not be a part of this. Can athletes hire agents to help with this? Yes, absolutely, and they will. It's essentially a wild west right now. Uh, tons, tons of organizations kind of forming around this new change in rules. Barstool Sports started signing players to uh, their brand. Endless number of similar businesses cropping up specifically to provide this service to athletes. Okay, what are the restrictions? All right, rules are going to, again, follow the policy of the school. And if there are any state-specific laws, you'll see a lot of those policies from the schools mimicking that of their state. Uh, there's going to be restrictions on tobacco, alcohol, gambling products. Also, a thing uh, you'll see is schools limiting the sort of brands that athletes uh, promote based on what their current affiliations are, right? If a school has a Nike affiliation, you're not going to see athletes of that school uh, doing promotional posts for Adidas because that's a conflict of interest there. So those are kind of the restrictions as of now. Things are changing quickly. Let's move to the next topic here. What are rules that Michigan, University of Michigan, has put in place? So Michigan has come up with their own policy for their athletes to follow, had this tweet with a link to their website to this actual policy. I'm going to step through this. I put chapters on this video. So if you want to skip through kind of this document overall, you can click that down below, but I'll give the cliff notes here. So for this first section, Lies out all the different ways athletes can use name, image, and likeness. So what I already covered kind of at the intro, but this makes sense, right? Nothing too interesting here. Second section here states that there are no limits to the amount of money that an athlete can make. It brings awareness that this income is taxable income and recommends these athletes consult with tax professionals to handle that income. And, and when it comes tax season, they'll be prepared with that professional. There's third section here. An athlete cannot accept endorsements if they are conditional. So an athlete can't accept something where it's like, okay, you'll get X dollars through this deal if you stay with this program for another year instead of going to the NFL, right? That's explicitly dis, like disencouraged. That's not going to be allowed. And it, it also mentions that uh, you, you cannot prioritize name image likeness obligations over team obligations. Can't skip class, go sign autographs. That's essentially what this third section is about here. Fourth section here, name image likeness profits cannot affect athletic aid but any need-based financial aid, that's a bit different. If there's a need-based financial aid for an athlete, making money through name, image, and likeness will impact that. Now, exactly how it will, that's to be determined, but it makes sense. If someone's making money off of name, image, and likeness, that need-based uh, financial compensation could be affected by that 
because it probably no longer applies, right? So that's something just to watch moving forward. Fifth section here, this one's really important, okay? Until July 15th, athletes need to disclose deals with University of Michigan ASAP. As soon as there's a prospective deal coming along, have to immediately disclose that to the university. July 16th onward, disclose deals at least a week before entering the agreement, okay? This sparked this tweet from Andy Staples, uh, trashing this part of Michigan's policy, essentially. And Michigan's at, uh, Associate Athletic Director, Kurt Svidoba, um, pointed out that this is a state law, not a university-specific policy, okay? So as the NCAA instructed, follow the state's laws. That should be part of the university building their own policies. This is what Michigan has done. So this disclosure, uh, this, this time period, whatever, this is something that the state of Michigan itself has imposed and Michigan's falling in line with that. So this isn't really something that Michigan, University of Michigan came up with, something that the state has in their legislature. Sixth section here, states the university's involvement pertaining name image likeness. So supporting, but not responsible for providing opportunities, okay? So that will be the athlete's responsibility to facilitate those opportunities. I think the university will probably still assist, but that'll be a later talking point. And then athletes cannot use university's trademark name, et cetera, as a part of those deals that come up. So it, the athlete has to have their own brand or uh, use just their name, their, their social media, whatever. They can't lump in the University of Michigan as a part of that deal, right? So it has to be off of their own name and not using university's trademarked material as a part of that. All right, seventh section here. Athletes can't sign deals that would be seen as damaging to the university. So I mentioned gambling, tobacco, alcohol, and no selling or trading equipment provided by the university. So you can't just sell your shoes that you got from the program as a part of being part of that athletic program. Eighth section here, final section, all right? Allowing agents, advisors, uh, these are all things that will be allowed. Using those agents or uh, those personnel that you hire should be strictly for name image likeness, okay? Nothing for negotiating NFL teams, future professional contracts, things like that. As soon as you start to have agents starting to pitch that and work with the collegiate athlete for that, that goes against the NCAA rules and uh, could affect your eligibility at the collegiate level at that point. Okay, so we've went through Michigan's entire policy here. How is it going to change collegiate athletics? Okay, firstly, it appropriately compensates athletes for their true market value, right? I think everyone can agree that's a great thing. It doesn't cost the university any money whatsoever. It doesn't cost the NCAA anything whatsoever. These are businesses, third parties that are uh, working with the athletes in the university and NCAA there are more facilitators of this. They're, they don't have to contribute any money as a part of this. It mainly solves, in my opinion, the paying players issue. Players can now make appropriate wages off of their notoriety. Um, it's an opportunity they, always, they should have always had. And I'm really excited for a ton of non-revenue sports that go, are going to have a huge opportunity as well. Um, in terms of recruitment, it's going to change forever. All right, we, we've truly hit a point now where you're going to have a, a pre name image likeness and a post name image likeness. That's how drastic I think this change really is going to be. Teams and universities that can appropriately take advantage of name image likeness are going to separate themselves from other programs. Growing a player's brand, supporting them through that, it's absolutely huge. Remember when Dabo Sweeney said that he'd quit collegiate athletics if players started getting paid? Now, why would he say that, right? What, what would push him to say something so outlandish. It changes the status quo, okay? It challenges that. We know that players get paid during recruitment cycles this day and age. That's something that happens. Uh, it's not according to the rules, doesn't follow the rules, but it happens. And that's known and understood in the landscape of college football recruiting these days, as well as other sports. But introduction of name, image, and likeness changes the game. It, it's a new selling point for a program. It's another avenue in which a, t a program needs to ensure they're up to par with other programs in the NCAA. In other words, it's more work, right? Teams that have success in a current rule set will fight future rules that challenge the status quo. And that's what's going on here with new rules, brings new obligations, more opportunities for other programs to make up ground on the existing programs that are already successful. So that leads to the main question here. The main reason you probably clicked on this video, how is Michigan going to take advantage of this and how are they doing? 
and it's kind of a mixed bag for me, okay? I'm actually re-recording this section, if you couldn't tell. I wanted to ensure that I got it right, okay? As of Saturday, July 3rd, this is the only tweet that Michigan has released in relation to name image likeness, okay? Many, many other programs have released videos and entire social media campaigns as a response to the new NCAA rules allowing this. Michigan simply hasn't, okay? It's not the end of the world at this point that we're not seeing much publicly. What's more important here it's how Michigan coaches and staff are pitching it to recruits, right? Those are the ones who are actually going to be affected by this. And Michigan's pitch to those recruits is more important than the social media campaign put out there. They're both important in my opinion, but behind closed doors, how they're prioritizing, what are the wheels in motion? That's truly what's, uh, what's going to change the game here. From some reports, it does seem like they're utilizing it well and they've hired specific positions for name image likeness positions in the university. So it seems like they're doing everything they can where it truly counts, again, with recruits. And secondarily, social media, that's where I think they're falling a bit short, okay? I compiled a list of follow numbers for each of the Big Ten football teams on Twitter, okay? These names in red here are ones that did not have a campaign on their football accounts or the main athletic accounts for their university. 10 of the 14 teams have released videos, multiple tweets, graphics, full-on campaigns around name image likeness, okay? Four have not, Michigan's among those four. So it's obviously a huge factor in recruitment. It has to be for most schools. It's going to be a baseline necessity to have a program in place to support players in this way. And it's going to be a thing where if you don't have that support in place, it's going to put you behind significantly. For some schools, it's going to be a significant avenue to separate yourself from other schools. Right now, it's all about potential for athletes, right? It's wild west right now. We don't really know the exact figures and dollar amounts that athletes will uh, be able to earn we're still fig figuring out the true market value for these athletes at each university as well so uh, recruits and players right now value universities that are taking every step to maximize that potential and fully show the potential that they will have so michigan's social media presence alumni presence brand power alone puts them at the very top of that earning potential and michigan needs to lean into that otherwise they're going to get left behind so while I would like to see more publicly available marketing, more videos, more graphics, things like that, that's from my viewpoint though. I have no doubt University of Michigan will support their athletes and are probably doing a lot more than what we're seeing at the surface level as a result of this rule change. So they still do need to promote it and use it, right? Recruits will respond to that from what they see on Twitter things like that. They may be interested in a school because of a video they've seen on social media, but again, that's secondary uh, compared to the primary, which is behind closed doors. We don't have visibility into that. So, it's okay, long video, but I'm really curious to hear you guys' thoughts below. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on name, image, likeness, how Michigan's doing, what they should be doing. I wanna hear all that from you guys. But beyond that, thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. We hit 4,000 subscribers. So honestly, thank you all who have subscribed. If you haven't already, help out. Road to 5,000. Here we go. Uh, so thanks again for watching. Stay safe out there. And as always, go blue.